welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you haven't been on here before or if you don't know me, my name's Cassie Amber and I'm a holistic nutritionist and I specialize in plant-based eating. <laughs> Excuse my dogs having a nap in the background. Um, today I wanted to talk about an interesting topic, what's the problem with cow's milk? Because most of the world drink cow's milk and they have no idea what they're actually putting in their bodies. They have no idea what it does to the animals the planet and they don't know what the benefits would be if they made some healthier plant-based alternative swaps. So I'm going to go over eight points and give you a little bit of education about what I've learned on my journey so far. I've been eating 90 to 95 percent plant-based for three and a half years now and it's the best decision I ever made. I even quit my corporate job after <laughs> I got a three and a half year degree in hotel management and then quit my corporate job to do nutrition because I just love helping change people's lives and inspiring them to feel better, do better, and it's just such a meaningful and purposeful career. So let's get into it. So number one, um, dairy is just a big marketing scheme. So even when you see the trucks drive past, once you become aware, you start to notice things going on. You see the trucks drive past and they're carrying like cows to the slaughterhouse and you can see their eyes through the little cracks and stuff and it is really heartbreaking once you notice that it's there but then you see a different truck transporting the milk around and it's like oh there's happy cows in this beautiful lush green paddock and not a problem in the world because these cows are so happy <laughs> and even on the milk bottles they've just got like these happy cows everything is just fine if you buy this product um it's really not the case. They've, it's such a money-making industry that they've marketed it to us to believe that we need milk for strong bones. So I used to obviously drink it when I was a kid and stuff, but it is really the opposite. <laughs> um, so obviously the dairy industry funds all of these studies telling you just how amazing milk is for you to get you to buy more. Um, so don't believe everything you see in an ad. Um, number two, um, milk, <laughs> oh my god, when I saw this in my studies, I was gobsmacked. So the countries around the world who drink the most amount of milk actually suffer from the highest rates of osteoporos osteoporosis and bone fractures. So uh, due to the high protein content in the milk, um, it creates more acidity in the body and then our bodies actually pull calcium back out of the bones to neutralize the acidity in the body or something like that so it actually just does the opposite effect and there's different like ways that you can get calcium you can get calcium from green vegetables you can get it from fortified plant milks there's so many different ways like tofu you can get it in, in so many different foods you don't have to get it from <laughs> someone else's mum's milk I was making my coffee the other morning and I was just like <laughs> Who would wake up in the morning and drink someone else's mum's milk? Like not even another human. Like when we were babies, we would drink human milk, but why don't we want giraffe milk? Or why don't we want our dog's milk when they have puppies and take their puppies off them? Or why don't we want um, like mouse milk? <laughs> Although you need to milk so many like mice, but like why not any other animal? Why a cow? And people will obviously believe that cows were put on this planet by God so that we could have their milk but they actually had to get pregnant by someone sticking their hand up their butt to loosen them up um, inseminating them And then they had to have their own baby and then get their baby taken off them if you're a human and if you're a mom could you imagine having your baby taken off you and then you're just stuck in a paddock mooing um, because you lost your kid after only a few hours or a day so 
is very very unethical but we've just become so accustomed to it that yeah you just have cow's milk in your coffee and pour it on your cereal and you need yogurt and you need cheese and you need to cook with cream and all of this stuff so it's all just be part of this marketing scheme um but anyway back to the health reasons so yeah the people who drink the most milk have the highest rates of bone fractures and osteoporosis and it just goes to show that whatever you see in the ads is not actually right um number three it creates mucus in the body and acne in a lot of people um milk was actually the first thing i gave up when i was 17 i went plant-based when i was 21 so years and years before i knew anything about that i decided to stop drinking milk before that i had a cough for a whole year no matter what season it was just a constant cough and mucus just stuck in my throat and after i gave it milk it magically disappeared um, it's not that weight loss is the focus of any of this, but it does help you to lose weight because cow's milk makes everything grow so dense as well. So by switching to a plant-based alternative, it's going to be a lot lighter on your body as well and like lower in calories, lower in fat. Um, so it's kind of a win-win situation. Um, and yet yeah, also causes breakouts in people because it's got a huge mammal's hormones from a mother who just had a baby so it just makes everything grow um number four 70 probably 70 to 80 percent of the world are actually lactose intolerant uh, so we shouldn't even be drinking it anyway um we often get accustomed to this because we think that the issues that we're experiencing on a day-to-day -day basis it's just part of your genes or oh, i was just born like this and i've had it my whole life and you don't actually know that that's not normal that signs that your body is saying that something that you're eating is wrong um so some of the signs of lactose intolerance is diarrhea nausea stomach cramps bloating and gas those are the main ones um, so if you experience that um, it's usually due to food intolerances i usually tell people that gluten and dairy are the main culprits uh, number five, um, I kind of mentioned this before, but calves being separated from their mums and being given powdered milk, imagine having your baby taken off you. So if we're drinking all the milk to have an our coffee and our cereal and our smoothies, what are their babies getting? They're put in a, a different pen somewhere else and they're given powdered milk. So I just think that's quite unethical and it's quite harsh when you think about it. Um, would you want to grow up without your mom? Uh, number six, cows are such large mammals. So what does that do to the human body? So I hear people all the time, they're like, when I drink cow's milk, it makes me feel strong. It makes me feel like I can grow. So you might think, oh, it's giving me stronger bones or, oh, it's helping me build muscle. But what does that do to our sexual organs, like our uterus and our breasts? And for men, maybe their prostate. It makes everything grow. If you have cancer cells, it makes everything grow. So that's not actually necessarily a good thing. Um, switch to plant-based milk. <laughs> um, number seven, females are raised to be milk machines like their moms, whilst the boys are sent to slaughter. So we have this horrible thing in the animal agriculture industry where we just think, oh, this little boy was born. Same as in the egg industry, all the roosters that are born, which are probably half of the eggs that hatch, oh, useless. In the egg industry, they're just growing them up alive. Oh, this cow just had a baby boy. We don't need it because we can't take their milk from them and get them pregnant to, t to like give their milk to humans. So, oh, we'll just send them to slaughter. <laughs> Sounds harsh, but that's what it is. Number eight, I just want to say that I'm not perfect, okay? I'm not 100% vegan. I still have cravings for cheese sometimes. I might have cheese once every one or two months if I'm dining out. I might get halloumi on my burger or something as a treat. I know I'm not 100% so I can't say that yes, I'm perfect. You should all be able to give it up straight away with no stress in the world. When you eat cheese, it actually targets the same part of your brain as like heroin or cocaine. I think I saw in a video. Um, it's got like the major pleasure factor is very dense food it's very high in calories it's very salty and i notice now that i don't have it and like yeah meat and all the animal products are so rich that once you do have a little bit of cheese it's like explosion in your mouth 
um, so it's not easy to give up. So I usually, if I'm at home, I don't usually even buy the vegan cheeses because they can be quite costly, but sometimes I do as a treat. Um, my flatmate at the moment made me the most delicious cashew, like smoked paprika cashew cheese spread that I've ever had in my whole entire life. Um, at my work, I buy a fermented cashew cheese that I have on crackers or on sandwiches or in wraps. Um, so I do do my best 99% of the time with that but on occasion I do slip up and I do have cravings as well I do still eat normal chocolate because I like that the most I don't think that it's about being perfect and saying that you can never have something again I think it's about reducing your consumption as much as you can so that you're still comfortable for you if that means going full vegan going completely dairy free then go for it if it means hey I might just eat plant-based, um, dairy-free, vegan during the week, um, and then eat what I want in the weekends. As long as it doesn't turn into a binge, if it's still a healthy relationship where maybe you want to dine out on the weekend, have a little treat, then you can. By making the change in the first place, it's going to make the biggest difference overall in the world, rather than saying that I'm not going to do that because I like such and such food too much. You might as well make the change and then save it for a treat, and then it's actually going to be an experience rather than just something that you're having all the time that you don't really savor. Um, the other thing is if I'm dining out or something and maybe someone else has cooked or if I'm at a restaurant and there's not really any options, I don't mind a tiny bit of dairy. Um, I know that if I have anything that's over a smidgen it's going to upset my stomach but I'm not like completely freaking out about things if I accidentally have some or maybe yeah someone cooked and like I don't know, you just have a tiny bit on your plate with a huge salad and lots of other plant-based options instead. So it's about finding the balance for you and everyone is different. Um, not beating yourself up as well. Um, if you would like to learn more about plant-based eating, I did make a free seven day plant-based masterclass series, which is a little email course. So I take you through um, the benefits of eating plant-based such as disease prevention, longevity and easy sustainable weight management. I have found since going plant-based that my muscles got bigger despite what everyone thinks that you're going to be so weak and skinny and lose all your muscles. My muscles got bigger and I lost body fat off my body which created a much more toned look. It might not be the same story for everyone but I've definitely noticed how easy it is to stay in shape. It's effortless. I don't count my calories. I don't track my food. I eat what I want when I want and everything just balances itself out so it's a blessing. Um, the dietary studies of the blue zones where people live to 100 years plus so that's what my studies were focused on. I did not do traditional nutrition where it's saying you need to have all this meat and dairy to stay alive. I studied the places where people live the longest, where they have the least amount of cancer, the least amount of diabetes, obesity and heart disease. I think that's a much more meaningful goal to work towards rather than just trying to lose weight. Um, the difference between veganism and plant-based, I'll take you through what they both mean. Common practices in the animal agriculture industry you may not know about. It might just make help you second guess your choices when you're out and about or just make a few better decisions so you feel like you're more aligned with your purpose and just doing your part in this world. How to cover your nutrition nutritional needs with plants rather than animal products. Um, so that's like your iron, your protein, your calcium, your zinc, iodine, iodine, um, omega-3s, etc. Um, so I'll take you through where to get those nutrients from if it's not from meat or um, dairy. Um, how to stay saturated throughout the day on plants to ensure you don't go hungry. I see lots of people posting in the vegan group saying, oh hey, I'm trying to get my boyfriend to go vegan, but he's starving all the time. How do I fix this? You can actually eat more food, so it's the best diet ever. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'll take you through how to make your meals more filling and really make them more dense so you're getting as much nutrients as possible. How to lose weight on a plant-based diet, forget counting calories and limiting portion sizes. As I said, it's the best thing ever. <laughs> Um, how to make the transition, it might not necessarily be like boom, one day you're eating the traditional western diet, the next day you're a perfect vegan. Um, for me it took a whole year of learning what works for me and um, like swapping out new food groups and stuff, so I talk about how to make the transition to that, how to make vegan food taste nice. Lots of people <laughs> just think it would be disgusting or they share 
very odd recipes. I'm not to judge, but I saw <laughs> I saw this lady post in the video group once, and she was like a lady, and she shared like a po mashed potato volcano with soy sauce in the middle. <laughs> and I know everyone's not a master chef, but honestly, I'll show you what to do to make it full of rainbow, full of color, full of spice, um, and make it really filling and hearty and everything like that as well. Um, how to make eating healthy affordable. Most people think that it's going to be so expensive to change their eating style, but it can actually save you money if you do it right. How to respond from questions from others and frequently asked questions, uh, especially if you're going to family dinners or if you're just telling your friends about your new lifestyle change or just people in general, like people of the public, you can get a little bit of backlash and people are confused and people think that you're going to die and shrivel up as well. So it's just about how to respond to that in a way where it doesn't start any arguments and they understand you and then you can carry on with your life and be an inspiration to others. Also, how to veganize your pantry, swap this for that, what to do to swap out your butters, your milks, your yogurts, and everything like that. Um, and then also, last of all, my personal tips. So if you'd like to sign up for the seven day free course, I made this to share my education and knowledge with everyone to make the transition and lifestyle change a little bit easier, then head to the description below and you can sign up for free. As you can see, there's a ton of value that's been poured into this. And I just wanted to share it with as many people as possible because every time I sit down for a meal, I know I'm doing a good deed. And I just think that is the best feeling in the world. So hit the link below and hit like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Otherwise, have a wonderful day or night ahead.